Hello everyone, welcome to yet another video on one of the most important concepts in SQL, normalization. In this session, we will dive into normalization, a key technique for structuring your database efficiently. This concept is frequently asked in interviews as employers often test candidates on their understanding of database design and their ability to maintain data integrity in real-world applications. Craving a career upgrade? Subscribe, like, and comment below. Dive into the link in the description to fast-track your ambitions. Whether you're making a switch or aiming higher, Simply Learn has your back. Also, if you are interested in a professional certificate course in data analytics, begin your learning journey with Simply Learn and IIT Kanpur's data analytics certificate course. Explore our learning management system, track your progress, and meet completion requirements. Join the professional certificate course in data analytics recognized as a top PG data program by AIM. Learn to understand data and enhance your analytical skills through live sessions with industry experts hands-on labs and masterclasses by IIT Kanpur's faculty. You can check the link mentioned in the description box below and in the pinned comment. So, let's get started. So, let's start with what is normalization. Normalization in DBMS is a method used to organize data within database to reduce repetition by breaking down large data sets into smaller, more manageable tables and ensuring these tables are properly related Normalization helps prevent issues like data redundancy. Data redundancy means the unnecessary repetition or duplication of data within a database. For example, when a same piece of data is stored in multiple places, it can lead to inconsistencies and take up more storage space than needed. For example, data redundancy before normalization. You can see the table mentioned above where we have order ID, customer ID, customer name, customer address, product and quantity. You might see some of the data which is being repeated again and again. In the above table, the customer address for John Doe is repeated three times. Let's suppose if John Doe moves to a new address, every occurrence of his address in the table must be updated. If any instance is missed during the update, it leads to inconsistencies and errors can occur in the database. The solution is reducing the redundancy through normalization. Let's check it out how. So you can see this is the normalized table we have created. First is the normalized customer table and then we have the order table. So what are the benefits of normalization? The address for John Doe is stored only once in the customer table. If John Doe's address changes, it needs to be updated in one place ensuring consistency through the database. This reduces the risk of errors and maintains data integrity. The process involves multiple steps that transform data into a tabular format, removing duplicates and establishing clear connections between different tables, making the database more efficient and reducing problems like errors during data insertion, updates or deletion. Let's now discuss the types of DBMS normal forms. Normalization rules are categorized into different normal forms. The first one is 1 and F. For a table to be in first normal form, it must satisfy the four rules. Single-valued atomic attributes. Each column should contain only one value per row. This means that there should be no repeating groups or arrays within a single column. Same domain values. All values stored in a specific column should be of the same data type or domain. For example, if a column is meant to store dates, all values in that column should be dates. Then we have unique column names. Each column in the table should have a unique name. This ensures clarity and avoids confusion when referring to a specific column. Then we have order of data which doesn't matter. The order in which rows are stored in the table should not affect the data or its integrity. Let's check the example of the first normal form. Consider the following unnormalized table. Customer ID, customer name and the phone numbers. As you can see, the phone numbers are repeated twice. The problems with the original table is the non-atomic values. The phone numbers column contain multiple phone numbers separated by commas, which violates the atomicity rule of 1 and F. Converting to first normal form, to bring this table into 1 and F, we must ensure that each column contains only atomic value. This involves splitting the rows where there are multiple phone numbers. As you can see, we have uh, splitted the data. 
Each row now has a single phone number ensuring that the phone number column contains atomic value. Same domain names, all the values in the phone number column are consistent in format and type. All are phone numbers. Then we can see that the unique column names, the columns customer ID, customer name, phone number, which has unique name satisfying the requirement. Order of data. The order in which the rows appear does not matter as the data's meaning and integrity are preserved. By applying these rules, the table now confirms the first normal form, eliminating any redundancy related to the phone numbers and ensuring data is stored in a more organized and efficient manner. Let's go through each of these database normal forms step by step with simple examples to help you grasp the concepts more easily. Let's talk about the second normal form. For a table to be in second normal form, it must satisfy the following condition. Number one, it must be in 1NF. Number two, no partial dependency. Every non-key attribute should be fully dependent on the entire primary key, not just part of it. This rule applies primarily to tables with composite primary keys. Example of second normal form is, consider the following table that is in 1NF. The order ID, product ID, product name, quantity and the supplier name. The problems with this table is that the partial dependency. The product name and the supplier name depend only on product ID, not the entire primary key, which is order ID and product ID. This violates 2NF. Converting to second normal form, to bring the table into 2NF, we separate the data into two tables to remove partial dependencies, order table and the product table. No partial dependency in the order table quantity is fully dependent on both, order ID and product ID. In the product table, product name and supplier name are dependent only on the product ID. This ensures that each non-key attribute is fully dependent on the primary key, bringing the tables into 2NF. Let's now talk about the third normal form, 3NF. For a table to be in third normal form, it must satisfy the following condition. Number 1. It must be in 2NF. Number 2. There should be no transitive dependency where non-key attributes depend on other non-key attributes rather than the primary key. Let's check out the example of a third normal form. Consider the following table that is in 2NF. The problems with the 2NF table is that the transitive dependency. The instructor name is dependent on the course name, which is not directly on student ID or course ID, and this violates 3NF. So how do we convert this into 3NF? To achieve 3NF, we split the table to remove the transitive dependency. Student course table and course table. No transitive dependency. Now, the student course table, there are no non-key attributes depending on other non-key attributes. The course table stores the course and instructor information separately. This structure eliminates transitive dependency, ensuring the tables conform to 3NF. Let's now talk about the boy called normal form, which is BCNF. BCNF is an extension of the third normal form 3NF. A table is in BCNF if it is in 3NF and for every functional dependency, A implies to B, A should be a super key. Let's check out the example of a boy called normal form BCNF. So you can see this table here consisting of employee ID, department and the manager. The problem with this table is that the BCNF violation. In this table, department determines manager but department is not a super key since employee ID is the primary key. This violates BCNF. So how do we convert this to BCNF? To achieve BCNF, we split the table to ensure that every determinant is a super key. As you can see the employee table and the department table. The super key requirement in the employee table, employee ID is the primary key and in the department table, department is now the primary key. The decomposition ensures that every functional dependency is satisfied by a super key meeting the requirements of BCNF. Let's now talk about the fourth normal form, which is 4NF. A table is said to be in 4NF if it is in BCNF and has no multi-value dependencies. So let's consider an example of a fourth normal form. Consider a table where an employee can have multiple skills and work on multiple projects. As you can see the employee ID, skill and the project. The problem with this table is that it is multi-value dependency. An employee skill is independent of the project, but both are stored in the same table. This leads to multi-value dependency violating 4NF. So, in order to achieve 4NF, we separate the skills and the projects into different tables. 
the employee skill table and the employee projects table and now you can see that no multi value dependency by separating the skills and the projects we eliminate multi value dependencies ensuring the table conform to 4nf let's now talk about the fifth normal form the employee skill table and the employee projects table so as you can see that no multi value dependency is there by separating the skills and the projects we eliminate multi value dependencies ensuring the tables conform to 4nf now let's talk about the fifth normal form which is 5nf a table is said to be in fifth normal form if it is in 4nf and cannot be decomposed into any smaller tables losing information also known as joint dependency let's consider an example of a fifth normal form this is a table here that records the relationship between suppliers parts and the project the problem with this table is that the joint dependency the table has a complex relationship between suppliers parts and projects that can be decomposed further so how do we convert this into fifth normal form in order to achieve 5nf we break the table into smaller related tables the suppliers part table and the suppliers project table also parts project table eliminating joint dependency by decomposing the table into three smaller tables we remove the complex relationship and eliminate the joint dependency ensuring the tables conform to 5nf so guys this was all for this video on normalization if you really like this video do give us a thumb up and subscribe to simply learns youtube channel for more videos thank you staying ahead in your career requires continuous learning and upskilling Whether you're a student aiming to learn today's top skills or a working professional looking to advance your career, we've got you covered. Explore our impressive catalog of certification programs in cutting-edge domains including data science, cloud computing, cybersecurity, AI, machine learning, or digital marketing. Designed in collaboration with leading universities and top corporations, and delivered by industry experts. Choose any of our programs and set yourself on the path to career success. Click the link in the description to know more. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.